Hey there, I'm Mr. Terry. I'm a high school history teacher. Welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. All right, we're heading back to Blue Jay today, and this topic's gonna be really interesting to talk about, and it is called History of the Korean DMZ in a Nutshell. If you don't know, the border between North and South Korea is the most militarized in the world, and it has been like this for decades, and there's a lot of context around it that you may not know. So hopefully Blue Jay is gonna cover that, and you know I've got your back for some more info. Our original video link is down below. So give them the view, like, subscription, and let's get started. There we go. Meet Timmy. Hey, Timmy, Timmy has been obsessed with Korean culture ever since his first time playing League of Legends. After years of learning Korean through Duolingo. Wait, Korean wait is League of Legends Korean or is it just popular amongst Koreans? Enacting his favorite mukbangs in his high school cafeteria. Oh, gross. And writing hundreds of Reddit posts on why Parasite and Snowpiercer are. are the greatest movies of all time. Timmy finally felt culturally appropriate gross. enough to visit South Korea. The second Timmy <laughs> stepped off the plane, he was in paradise. He had to try it all. He visited dozens of gaming cafes, <laughs> toured the city of Seoul, stalked his favorite K-pop idols. Yeah. Yes, Timmy had finally found the place that uh, he could call. You don't want to get too close. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh shit, was that the DMZ? <laughs> it's true. Do not get near it. Over a million soldiers stationed there. The Korean DMZ, or Demilitarized Zone, is a 250 kilometer long, 4 kilometer wide stretch of land on the Korean Peninsula. The region, filled with gun turrets, electric fences, and landmines, serves as a buffer zone between North and South Korea. Yep. With nearly 2 million soldiers patrolling the border between two countries who are technically still at war, the DMZ yes. is often cited as the most dangerous place on Earth. The zone was established in 1953, following the signing of an armistice to end the Korean War. But if history's taught us anything, it's that your war wasn't a banger unless it had a sequel. In <laughs> Let's go back the to that Korean one and say. But if history's taught us anything, it's that your war wasn't a banger unless it had a sequel. Second Sino, okay, World War I, World War II. First Sino Japanese War, Second Sino Japanese War, First Indo China War, Second Indo China War. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the awful thing is how bad those sequels were. Because the first parts don't actually solve the issues. Now, Korean War, if you don't know, Korea, which had been taken over decades previous to World War II by Japan, had just gotten its independence. But since it was a former Axis uh, power, it was divided amongst the allied countries, specifically the United States and the Soviet Union, which, of course, had very different ideas about what a future Korea should look like. Same with a whole bunch of other places like Germany and um uh, go to Vietnam and in the ways different different countries that wanted to you know oversee its growth, and we get a civil war because of it and a brutal one, the one that gets uh, overshadowed so much. But when you look at like per capita deaths and deaths per time period, there's a lot of things about the Korean War that dwarfs World War II. In following this tradition, the Korean DMZ incident, or what is referred to by some as the Second Korean War, occurred from 1966 to 1969 really it and like consisted of a war, series of lower-scale yeah. clashes along the border. In 1966... So the, the, the war ended up, if you want to look back at this map here... And it consisted of a... So there was the 38th parallel, this line right here. Now, what was common amongst the UN and the countries after World War II is when you had one of these former uh, uh, Axis power colonies... And there was a divisive nature about who should, say, oversee the rebuilding of these countries. Usually what they did is split those countries in half. <laughs> they did that uh, in a bunch of places where they just split them up, right? And uh, so that was the original border. And actually where the war ends, which was in a stalemate, you could see it doesn't actually change a ton of territory-wise. So it kind of ends kind of where it begins with nothing but millions of people basically dead as a result of it. Korean War didn't accomplish really anything um, that it set out to do by either side. North Korea is going to invade the South, wants to unify it. South Korea um, doesn't do great. The United States comes and joins and helps, pushes back the North Koreans out of South Korea and almost out of the Korean Peninsula um, in general. Then the Chinese come and help North Korea push it back to this border. And this is where the armistice ended. And no peace treaty has ever been signed for this war. It ended in the 50s, 70 years later, which technically, if you want to get nerdy about it, means the Korean War is still going on. Series of lower scale clashes along the border. In 1966, President Lyndon B. Johnson was visiting South Korea to thank them for contributing forces to the Vietnam War effort. Some of you may die, <laughs> but it's a sacrifice I am willing to make. Thanks for clock slash. LBJ. <laughs> Meanwhile, North Koreans slipped through the DMZ and ambushed American troops. 
catalyzing the following three years of skirmishes. The grandest of incursions took place in January of 1968, when 31 North Koreans crossed the DMZ and scattered over the South Korean countryside. This will be that second Their objective? Assassinate conflict. South Korean President Park. Two days into their invasion, four brothers stumbled upon the commando's camp, putting the North Koreans into a predicament. Oh shit! Whoa, 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 whoa. Now hold on, comrade! <laughs> these men, Great these Koreans, they are our brothers. We need to indoctrinate them. Listen, you were lost, but now you were found. Communism will improve the lives of all Koreans. I swear to its greatness. Here, I'll show you. You see this wood here? Instead of this being your wood, watch. Now, it is our wood. Understand? All right, we'll let you go. But this is a warning. Do not go to the police. You hear me? Hey, hey, look at me, look at me. No <laughs> police. <laughs> got that? Good. He's got great comedic timing, by the, the way. The brothers immediately informed the police of the commando's presence, putting the military on full alert. The North Koreans made it into the capital, oh. changed into South Korean uniforms, and passed through multiple checkpoints, getting as close as like, 100 yards from their objective before they were caught, causing them to flee towards the DMZ. Oh, yep. In the end, mm -hmm. one made it back across, 25 were killed, one was captured, and one committed suicide. The DMZ incident would go on oh. for another year. Come on, I was just getting over the horrible ending, and or the horrible last season of Game of Thrones. Please don't bring it back. I just, I've been through three years of therapy for this. I don't want it undone. Year with the North Koreans capturing an American boat and shooting down an American plane. While many view murder as the worst crime a human can commit, some believe certain acts justify it. Acts like armed robbery, preying on children, gardening. Yeah. Maybe you don't agree with the last one, but in 1976, some North Korean soldiers no more did. And what can be viewed as either pure American hatred or fiercely passionate environmentalism. Yeah, so in North Korea today, North Koreans, you know, largely blame the United States for the split of um split of the country uh because they believe, you know, with that with that them moving into the south, it was going to unify it, right? And it's the Americans that are dividing the Korean people. That's that's still a mindset. That goes on in North uh, North Korea, which gives a lot of animosity towards the United States. To them, it's like the the war is still very much alive, and the Americans are the part of that. Two American officers were axed and bludgeoned to death by North Koreans while trimming a tree in the DMZ. This became known as the Korean Axe Murder Incident. News of this went Oof. all the way up to the White House, and the only thing that can make President Ford's blood boil more than hearing of American killings is mentioning commies are responsible. <laughs> oh, Kim. Every president Kim, after World War Kim, II. Kim. <laughs> now you fucked up. In response, <laughs> in an ultimate show of you don't fuck with the United States, Operation Paul Bunyan was greenlit. Named after oh, the mythical really the lumberjack name? from North America. I didn't know folklore, that was the name of it. The operation was simple return to the DMZ to fully cut down the tree rather than trim it. But this time, with a little bit of backup. Great analogy. the US and South Korea brought 140 men armed with axe handles, pistols, M16s, grenade launchers, vehicle-mounted chain guns, chainsaws, commandos with fucking claymore mines strapped to their oh chests, and a team of 64 South Korean special forces with no guns, just clubs, Taekwondo training, and the spirit of Bruce Lee to guide them. Dude, what if it was, though, just like a big freaking... Bruce Lee battle of thousands of people. Dude, do wars could be so much cooler and less deadly. To give them a little backup, they brought a 23 vehicle convoy with a tank, 20 utility helicopters and seven attack helicopters. Yeah. To give them a little backup, they brought B-52s, oh F-4s, F-5s, F-86s and F-111s, all of which are armed and ready to engage. This is like the golden age of bombing technology i mean yes world war ii had some amazing things when it comes to bombing but the korean war there was more uh bombs you know like dropped just in the short korean war than world war ii as far as devastation goes then it's going to get even crazier in the conflicts like vietnam they brought a carrier offshore and had nuclear capable bombers circling overhead so yeah, finally every, everybody behind showed. the border they had full infantry artillery and armor divisions standing by and Bruce Lee. And a chainsaw. <laughs> While Jeremy Wade has made some dazzling catches over the years, he pales in the limelight of South Gross. Korean fishermen. Morning, June. Good hold today? Oh, pretty good. Healthy amount of mackerel and anchovy. Yourself? Oh, yeah. A couple dozen squid, some hair tail, submarine. 
North Korean espionage? North Korean espionage, that's right. <laughs> in 1998, a North Korean espionage submarine was caught in a fishing net just south of the border. <laughs> South Korean fishermen. What a terrible, what a terrible submarine. It could just get caught in a net. Like, we. <laughs> a North Korean espionage submarine was caught in a fishing net just south of the border. We South Korean fishermen out. observed crewmen attempting to untangle the sub and reported it to the Navy. The Yugo class submarine sank as the South Korean Navy was towing it to port. When oh it was salvaged gosh. a few days later, of the nine submarine. member crew, five were found executed and four had committed suicide. Oh my god. One could say, for the North Koreans, things did not go swimmingly. <laughs> Our final story takes place in 2017. It's commonplace to hear tales of daring escapes from North Korea, but it's rare for border crossings oh. to take place through the DMZ, yeah. and even more rare when the direction of crossing is into North Korea. Nevertheless, South Korea... Uh, today, most, most crossings from North to South actually go through China, um, and then get to South Korea that way, because, again, that demilitarized zone, it's completely censored. You can't step a foot um, there without somehow getting insiders involved, uh, stationed along it. And yeah, people die a lot and have for a long time. Korean soldiers captured a 59-year-old man from Louisiana attempting just that. The man told investigators that his mission was to visit North Korea and resolve the escalating regional tensions. And how is our heroic peace activist from the Pelican State going to accomplish this daring escapade? It seems we will never know. But the only thing he packed for his mission was extra underwear, so unless he was playing some MacGyver shit or able to pull off a 10-foot vertical, I don't think it would have gotten very far. <laughs> By the way, look at the stories. Uh, there are a handful of Americans that defected to the northern side during the Korean War. Some really good documentaries about them um, that are there. Some of them, uh, actually, I think there might even only be like one left. I forgot his name, the tall guy with the glasses. Brezhnev or something. I, for Drez I forget his name, but there's a documentary about him. It's super fascinating. Forgot the guy's name. Let me know down below. I used to know. Or would he? So, in conclusion... <laughs> While the DMZ Underwear provides an isolated payroll. region allowing endangered species to thrive, oh. and apparently 5G service, simply picking up gardening is all it takes to bring down enough firepower to make Saving Forever Ryan look more like Saved by the Bell, 4 oh. to 10 stars. Dude, for real though. <laughs> all right, final thoughts. You know, the DMZ is such a fascinating part of history that's still alive and still occurring. It's crazy because of how, again, long, you know, this conflict was. And then the DMZ as a result of it is a physical reminder of a war that really ended like 70 years ago. But to see it still alive is like witnessing history. It's like going back in time almost like, you know what I mean? But witnessing history as uh, as it's still happening. So anyway, yeah, check into it. The, the North Korean South Korean relationship and the North Korea story is just fascinating to its inception with the Kim dynasty here that's now in their third generation and um, what goes on there and stuff. And there's probably a lot of misinformation too about North Korea began to it because it is a information black hole as information uh, from the public does not get in or out. Uh, it's, but it's, and it's also been an interesting dilemma for countries in foreign policies about how to deal with them, if at all. And don't know where that conflict may end if it ever is going to. Who knows? I don't know. How do you think the Korean War should technically end? What would it look like? What's plausible? Don't know. But you can let me know down below. All right. Thanks again for Blue Jay making another great video. Awesome stuff. I uh, love watching them. Original video link is down below. Make sure you give that view, like, subscribe, check out their other videos. And of course, come on back and I'll share some more stuff with you. All right. We'll see you all next time. Bye.